Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Erickson TV. Curtis here with Lauren. Hello, Lauren. Hey, Curtis. Everybody. So, Lauren, um, uh, this has been an interesting uh, couple months in the uh, global equity markets. Um, <laughs> you know, the vol volatility is definitely back. Yes. Um, which which uh, is, isn't all that unusual. We have periods of volatility. So, I thought it was, uh, it was interesting. We had a uh, we had the, we had that one day on. Uh, back in the uh, middle of August of where we had like a big sell-off. Um, right. I'm not going to specifically talk about that, but the interesting thing is um, there, there, was a, there was a large amount, there's a large amount of uh, investors that, that do it themselves at firms like TD Ameritrade and Scott Trade. Right, yeah. And the, the, t the reason I wanted to bring that up was on that day, the, both TD Ameritrade and Scott Trade basically, even though they actively encourage active trading, I mean, with all with, with the way they have their website set up, and you know, looking for stock research, and they love short selling, and, and you know, you know it, it, all kinds of selling. Um, their their actual investors could not get through that Monday and, and actually make trades. They could barely get on their website, right. um, and they, and they they had hours where they were basically locked out of their account. Um, hmm. So. I think part of that is, is that there's a lot, a lot of volume that day, um, but it, but it just shows that the technology is not maybe necessarily there for the the retail investors to trade um, right. if they want to. So what, what's yeah. your take on that? Well, it, <laughs> it might have been a blessing in disguise for some investors, yeah. but I think, um, yeah, you know, I think that a lot of these businesses that that set up to uh, to sell you something as an investor, it's worth it to. Because that specific example is something that um, most of the people who work with us or who have ever worked with us are probably not really going to get into day trading. Right. You know, even if um, even if they end up not agreeing with us on everything, they're probably not going to go that far. But in general, you know, people will offer these investment services, and you should ask yourself whether they can really come through with it. Right. You know, uh, E Trade or Ameritrade, uh, Scott Trade. You know, they have uh, this this marketing slogan that basically says. Hey, you're in control all the time. You can do whatever you want to all the time. Well, first of all, that's probably not going to help you. But for second, very, and for very low fees. So yeah, for very low fees. But the reality is that at the the time when you most want, might want to use it is when it fails. And what I'm thinking about it with regard to that too is there's a wide range of investments out there. This is not having anything right. to do. But this is just a tangent. There's a wide range of investments out there that are supposed to be low risk. But they only screw up at exactly the point when you most need them to do really, really well. Uh, hedge funds tend to fall in that category. Funds of hedge funds, all sorts of really exotic and fancy ways of trying to do things. They, they, they don't have any volatility all until the absolute worst possible time, right. and they have tons of volatility. That's kind of what that example reminds me of: is this trading platform where you can trade all the time, anytime you want to, for very low fees, except when you might really want to. Right. <laughs> yeah, and my takeaway from this to end this episode is that, as you already alluded to, our our investors and the structured funds that we use are the the antithesis or the opposite of what TD Ameritrade right. and SkyTrader are trying to do. We we purposely will set up um, during these high volatility moments, and and we, we do not want to be selling at the bottom for one thing. Right. Yeah. Um, so. Um, so, if any of your current clients, uh, I didn't bring this up to alarm you. I just wanted to let you know that there are these other so-called alternatives that may be uh, at first blush low cost. Right. You, may, you might be getting what you're paying for. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's right. Um, thank you for watching this episode of Ericsson TV. We'll see you next time. Bye now. See you next time.